Welcome back. Past guests on this show have described it as a crisis as both public defenders and assistant district attorneys across Wisconsin suffer severe staffing shortages with pay severely lagging behind their private counterparts. Putting numbers onto the problem, Ari Brown with Wisconsin Policy Forum out with a new report. Welcome back to the show. Yeah, thanks so much for having me on. So you've just put out this new research. Talk to me about how large the gap is between public and private attorneys in Wisconsin. Yeah, so looking at numbers from 2021, um, we found that the uh, the median um, assistant district attorney and public defender in the state makes about $75,000 a year right now. Um, that's compared to, in the private sector, um, lawyers across Wisconsin who make about $115,000, so about a $40,000 gap. And where do you think the shortages are most severe around the state? Yeah, so I think this is a great question. And, um, you know, I think there are going to be challenges depending on where you look. Um, in some of your bigger offices, you're going to have, uh, you know, in your in Milwaukee County, Dane County, uh, you're going to have individuals who likely have uh, a lot of other, um, you know, law opportunities, employment opportunities, um, especially when you consider that uh, currently with the state's uh, pay progression schedule, the starting salary for uh, for assistant district attorneys and public defenders is $27.24 an hour, uh, which equates to about $57,000 a year. Um, you know, you have many opportunities in those areas that have lots of jobs to offer, especially law jobs um, that are going to pay far more starting out, um, especially when those individuals also have student loans. In your smaller offices, you're, you know, you might not have the same, uh, you know, wide swath of availability, um, but those offices are dealing with challenges related to, you know, you you have just one vacancy in your office of just a, a couple of people, and that is a significant amount of your workload um, that that is missing uh, and, and a backlog that is being created in the meantime. So, I think different offices are dealing with these challenges differently, but um, you know, we those are kind of the the that's the dichotomy that we've heard of so far. And it's been a story now for, I want to say, a year or two, at least in terms of headlines. Obviously, this, you know, the shortages and the backlog started farther back than today. But we've talked a lot about how, you know, when there's a shortage of public defenders, it impacts case backlogs. And same for district attorneys. When you don't have district attorneys, as recently happened in Dodge County, their entire, you know, their entire office essentially resigned. That leaves a gap for public safety. Do you feel like it's worse based on your research for one, you know, public defenders or district attorneys? Do, does one have it worse than the other? Yeah, so I think, you know, it's hard to say whether one is, is worse than the other. I think we're hearing about um, different challenges. Um, I know, you know, we talked to some folks from the Office of the State Public Defender who talked a lot about um, video evidence and how, how that's playing into their uh, caseload. Um, you know, beyond just the, the problems that the pandemic created, you've had over the last couple of years this really big explosion in terms of the amount of video evidence that is available from things like body cameras, security cam footage, but also, you know, cell phone footage. That all has to be viewed, and that is part of the job of being a public defender. Um, so you have, you know, individuals who um, are spending upwards of six hours a week, um, you know, just viewing video evidence in, in addition to all of the other um, you know, facets of that job. And that is consuming a lot of time on top of the backlogs that were created by the pandemic. Um, I think for, for district attorneys, you're, you know, just some of the backlog numbers are um, pretty staggering there. You've had um, both felony and misdemeanor backlogs creep up uh, to, from, you know, having been just a couple of months before it's now being closer to eight, nine, 10 months um, in some cases. So, uh, you know, those backlogs kind of create the spiral where you have, you know, Pace loads that are waiting. You have, um, you know, potential vacancies in the office, and the more and more those backlogs are created, the fewer individuals are going to want to join onto that process and, and try to alleviate those backlogs. So, um, you know, we saw this huge uptick uptick in backlogs created by the pandemic that has started to come down a little bit, but is still well above where it was in 2018 and 2019. Absolutely. And I think looking forward, which is what we all want to do here, what's the solution here, right? And I don't expect that the report finds a solution to this problem that's at a legislative level, but what are some things that might help mitigate this? Yeah, so I think, you know, the big item here uh, and one that you see in the governor's budget proposal for both uh, district attorneys and uh, public defenders is a starting salary increase. Um, currently, as I mentioned, it's at $27.24 an hour. Um, or about $57,000 a year. 
that would rise under the governor's budget to $35 an hour, which would be closer to that $70,000, $75,000 uh, a year range. Um, that is a, a big proposal there. Um, one item in the uh, public defender, uh, you know, governor's proposal is uh, something that we looked even a little bit closer at, which is the compensation rate for private sector attorneys who are doing public defender work. This is very common. This happens in all 50 states um, where you have, you know, just due to um, the, the sheer amount of, of workload that, that is out there, as well as conflicts of interest, you very often have private attorneys who will take on public defender work. Um, they are compensated all at the same rate. It is an hourly rate. Um, up until 2020 in Wisconsin, that rate was $40 an hour, which for a very long time was the lowest rate in the country. Uh, it was raised to $70 an hour in 2020, um, which is still kind of on the low end. The governor's, the governor's proposal would raise that to $100 an hour, which is obviously a significant increase. It's much more in line with what you see in many other states. Um, and that might attract more individuals to, uh, to you know, take up some of those uh, caseloads. Uh, we, you know, mentioned in the report that the number of private uh, attorneys who are kind of on the rolls to do public defender work has declined over the last couple of years. So I think those are some of the big ones, just all related to compensation. And I think we kind of viewed that in, um, you know, the the um, aspect of the, the fact that the budget, you know, we're, we're looking at one of the largest surpluses in state history. Um, so I think those are kind of the ones that you'll hear more often. And then I think, you know, going into the future, thinking about things like video evidence and, and how you can, you know, make the, the job of a public defender or a district attorney uh, a little bit easier in terms of, you know, staffing, um, making sure that there are adequate positions by which to do all of the work that is out there. All right. I appreciate your expertise. I appreciate the policy forum for putting this research out. Thanks so much for joining the show. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. We'll be right back.